What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. And guys, today we're going to talk about Mina Protocol. What is Mina Protocol? All right, so we have a serious problem going on with both Bitcoin and Ethereum, guys. Have you guys ever gotten a new cell phone and it is like blazing fast? And then you just take a bunch of photos, you're going out eating with friends, taking pictures of your friends, all kinds of garbage, sending all kinds of texts. And then ironically, like eight or nine months later, for some reason, that phone is about as quick as a rock and it's like dude this is like the best paperweight ever but i need a new phone so i mean dude let's go and get into mina protocol talk about how they're changing the game talk about goods bads and uglies about it if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys do three things for me like subscribe bell button leave a comment below in the description saying you subscribe and you'll get throwing it into a drawing to earn 100 dollars and free btc all right so we're going to show a quick chart overview of mina protocol man it looks vicious what the pants it looks like one of them farming tokens we always show but guys there's a reason for that we're going to explain the tokenomics so you guys can see that junk see that junk inside that trunk all right, so the world's lightest blockchain powered by participants. Mina is building a privacy preser preserving gateway between the real world and crypto. So guys, we're going to make this video as, as confusing as possible. No, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm going to break it down. I'll read a couple things on here, explain a couple things and break them down. First off, they are claiming to be the world's lightest blockchain powered by participants. And yes, they are the world's lightest. And let me show you. In comparison, the Mina blockchain is 22 kilobytes. How much is 22 kilobytes? Guys, that's like not even, it's not even the size of a text message. Text messages are bigger than 22 kilobytes. And that's the whole size of the stinking blockchain. Now, other chains are over 300 gigabytes and it's increasing in size. Why is this massive? Well, guys, it's increasing in size. I mean, it's getting larger and larger and larger. So in order to get a full node, you have to download every single thing in that blockchain. And that's a serious problem, especially when you have like these onesie twosies type of people who are like, yeah, let's start mining the code or let's start being like proof of stake on Ethereum. And uh, I like steak so I can earn some chicken. No guys, that that's the problem is once it gets too big, it's way too big. And Mina is solving that problem by providing a smaller blockchain. How did they do this? All right, so this picture kind of says it all in a hundred words, but what you need to know, it's a proof of a proof. So I want to measure how much uh, money I have or how much gold I have. So I'll take a picture of one gold bar that is sitting on the ground. And now I see, okay, great. I have one full gold bar and it's sitting on the ground. Great. So now my next picture is going to be 10 gold bars that are also on the ground. So I'll take a picture of those 10 gold bars and the one picture with the one gold bar. And now it shows that I have proof of 11 gold bars. Why is this important? Well, instead of carrying all 11 gold bars and carrying it to the guy and saying, look, bro, I have 11 gold bars. I'm just gonna give you a picture showing, look, here's 11 gold bars. But yet it's a picture of a picture of me holding one of the bars and a picture of 10 golden bars there. So technically it's 11 golden bars, but yet it's all in one picture. It's hard to explain, but this little diagram here shows it. So you have a picture and then you have pictures of a bunch of pictures. So really it's a picture of a picture of a picture of a picture. So you're doing proof of a proof of a proof. So like Ethereum stores the whole entire ledger. Bitcoin stores the whole entire ledger. It breaks down every single transaction. Another good example of this is credit card statements. How many of you guys actually read your credit card statement? Probably not. You just look at that number that you got to pay at the end and you pay it. That's what uh, Mina is looking to do. It's just trying to be that number at the end and say, boom. So what's also cool about the Mina protocol is they have things called snaps. So snaps are similar to dApps that are on Ethereum. Now, what are dApps? Well, dApps are like little protocols that are running on Ethereum, AKA smart contracts. So you do this, then that type of thing. Or you can be like, pay Jeff when John pays Bob or whatever. You can make different smart contracts to do that. And yes, they have snaps. Well, that's what they call them. They're dApps, but they're called snap. So here's what's cool about Mina. Um, they're actually able to interact with the internet as well. So these snaps can privately interact with any website and access verified data 
for use on chain. So it's able to enhance and use the data that is out there on the internet and bring it on chain. So that's pretty fire sauce. And yeah, dog, their community is massive. Like it's a huge community and they got a bunch of investors, guys. Let me just show you guys some of their investors. They got accomplice, attorney, Andrew Keys, uh, Bixen Ventures, blockchains. I mean, dude, they got so many of them. They even got NGC Ventures on here. Uh, they got Three Arrows Capital. They got Multicoin. Guys, they got some massive, massive names on here. But anyways, guys, uh, just take a look at their team. Big team, big team. These guys know what they're doing. Uh, they created a great product, in my opinion. They still have a lot to prove. They need to obtain a strong network effect similar to Ethereum. But what this project is heavily looking to do is factor in the scalability solution. The MENA protocol does not have high throughput. It only has like one transaction per second, which is not crazy high. Uh, you can actually check out their uh, ledger to see how the blocks are going and their block rewards. You can actually open up each of them and see the average transaction fees right now. It looks like it's about a tenth of a MENA. Uh, right now for each of them and they're paying out pretty hefty rewards let me show you guys a quick breakdown of this and this is also why you guys saw a massive uh sell-off on these tokens is their tokenomics are kind of sucky in the beginning so like the first four years you're going to have some serious inflation and then after that it's just a consistent seven percent inflation rate in fact at the genesis uh there was one billion tokens launched so that is a lot of tokens guys um, so by the time year four comes around, they will almost not double in size, but they will increase by 60%. So that's a lot of inflation, a lot of tokens. I mean, it's not a massive amount, but still it is, it's pretty heavy. Like Ethereum's is like 3% or about two and a half percent, and it's going to be less soon. So that's something to factor in as well. And it still has a lot to prove. So now a quick overview of the roles and incentives are the verifiers. The verifiers are basically going to be the people who prove like, yeah, this is the uh, true thing. This is real. This is legit. Like this is it. And then they get compensated for doing so. Then you have the block producers, which are basically the miners or stakers and other protocols. Then you have the snarkers. Basically, these are the people who are, I, I would call them the photographers. So just verifying the transactions and um, basically doing the picture of that picture. And of course, they will be compensated for doing so. Also, here's a quick um, overview of the life cycle of a MENA transaction. So first off, you have the mempool. So then the block producer picks it up. The block producer then looks at the local mempool and finds the most or profitable transactions and pull, aka pulls the one with the highest gas fees. And then the block producer adds the snark to the block in equal quantity to the transaction they've added. Next, those snarks correspond to the unsnark transactions added to the queue, aka the lower amount. And then each recently added transaction has its own order book on the snarks. So when it's looking for someone to give the zero knowledge proof or the aka approval, they will look for the ones with the lowest fee snarks. Remember there are snarkers. So then it adds the new transactions and snarks of previously added transactions to the queue. Then the block producer adds the new block to the MENA blockchain. And so then now they take a picture with the new blockchain and then it's a picture inside the picture, etc. And now the new transactions are added. The block producer updates the ZK snark for the blockchain and that's how it stays at that consistent size. Because remember, they're taking a picture of a picture and now when they add a new transaction, They'll take a picture of the new transaction next to the old picture, and now they will use that new picture for the blockchain. That's how you can understand that. And this is a quick overview of the economics of Amina transaction as well, just so you guys can see that. And over time, uh, the block reward multiplier by participation rate, this will go down over time. So over time, what Mina is looking to do is have the actual transactions that um, people using the network pay compensate all of the users or compensate all of the nodes and stakers so that there is no inflation reward so it keeps it from inflating to infinity but right now we're in a not infinity but theoretically it just keeps going up right now we're in a bootstrapping phase hence why inflation is super high 
All right, so here's a quick overview of the roadmap. You guys can see they've been building since 2017. And you guys can see they've been keeping up at it pretty well in 2021. It was basically when mainnet launched. So now they're starting to work with the snap logic and work with full nodes running on the mobile and web. And you guys can see they still have some mm -hmm. stuff to build out and still some stuff to, ve to develop. What can you do on the MENA network? Well, you can be a block producer or a snark worker. So basically just generating proof of transaction. There are a couple block explorers. Here are two of them. I also want to show you guys this as a quick overview of the uh, token circulation, just so you guys can see um, how intense it's going to be. But you guys can see a lot of the tokens that were given to early adopters, to the founders, um, the core con contrib contributors, etc. A big portion are going to them, guys. And if they've been or if they've had their tokens locked up for a while, or if they've been waiting to launch, they're probably going to want to dump some of them. Remember Coinbase stonk, or remember Coinbase stonk, or even remember something like ICP. They did the same exact thing. Also, I think this little overview right here will help as well. This shows you Bitcoin and Ethereum and the total data storage that they have on the network. Like they're getting into massiveness, like 300 gigabytes right now. Um, and it's only going to grow from here, guys. And it's going to grow exponentially. So as more and more people are getting onto the network using the protocols, mm -hmm. it's going to have to store more and more data. So this is really important to understand as well. Um, me personally, I, I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird. How do you verify the current state of the chain without having the historical data? So they, they basically phrase it like this. The average user does not need to know the entire transaction history. Yes, that is very true. But still, how do you know, like if worst case scenario, if something was to happen, well, then what would you do? And they do actually have a solution for this. Uh, however, it's not every client. There are some clients that have a full archival history and can operate as archival nodes. So basically this stores a full history of the network on chain. So it's kind of like, oh, well, that's that's interesting. Maybe that's good, but it's it's one of those things like how how can I trust you and you trust me? So that's, that's also why I'm kind of on the fence with it. But hey, time will tell. We'll see what happens. If you ever want to view that you're actually producing blocks, you can both view it on the Block Explorer or you can put in these different inputs on the nodes you're running. If you want to learn more about being a snark and snark worker, um, I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can see it and you guys can learn more about it. And me personally, what do I think about this project? Time will tell. Um, I'm not personally investing in this right now. I want to see what it does. Um, I believe there is going to be better buying opportunities if you are bullish on this. But again, it's not financial advice. There is a lot of inflation going on right now. And there still is a lot of competition out there. If you guys enjoyed the video, guys, make sure you guys do three things. Like, subscribe, bell button. Leave a comment below in the description saying you subscribe. You'll automatically get thrown into a drawing to earn $100 and free BTC. And yes, let's go over a couple of frequently asked questions, guys. Um, obviously, a lot of people always ask about test nets, even with Mina Protocol. But it's basically to check and view that the transactions, or AKA the proof of concept, will work. As always, guys, we'll leave you guys with a wisdom one liner Proverbs chapter 22, verses 10. Drive out the mocker and out goes strife. Quarrels and insults are ended. That's so true, man. Get rid of that riffraff and good comes in guys want to support the channel here's a link to gitcoin grants here's a quick uh, profile overview links in the description below as well but basically they help support the channel through quadratic funding if you're unfamiliar how this works is if 10 people deposit or if they support the channel with a donation of ten dollars the match amount is going to be way higher than it would be if one person who did ten dollars so if you guys are choosing to support the channel when you guys are supporting it there is a quadratic funding mechanism that is on gitcoin right now basically what it means is the more people that support the channel it doesn't even have to be a crazy amount it could just be a dollar two dollars but what happens is Bitcoin will match that through a quadratic formula. So the more people that support the channel, it'll match that amount with a higher amount. And a good thing about uh, donating through Gitcoin, you don't have to just donate to me um, or you don't even have to donate at all. Make sure you guys give. I mean, giving is a really good thing to do. Make sure you look at other protocols that you want to support, 
or other channels or other influencers or other developers that you want to support participating in something like the Gitcoin grants or anything on Gitcoin. It actually enabled me to get into several different airdrops. So if you guys are wanting to get into airdrop, donate like a couple dollars or anything. I mean, I've, I've donated uh, a couple dollars on my account. It gave me airdrops. So basically the airdrop paid for it. And I still keep giving back to the community because I understand that guys, we're still early in crypto and we need to support it as much as we can. And of course, guys, gotta say thanks to the patrons. Scott Bot, Dumb Man, Tariq Lou, TL King, and JP, PJ. Dogs, thanks for watching. All right, guys, if you want to catch me on TikTok, I do daily wisdom one-liners and let you guys see the pets and behind the scenes junk. So here it is. Scan it. Check it out. Bomb, bomb. All right, so next off, guys, if you guys want to support the channel and get paid to do it, you guys can check out Celsius. Celsius is fire, dude. So what's so cool about Celsius is, guys, first off, you can get $40 in free BTC using my referral link in the description below. Just deposit $100. Add in the uh, code BTC50. You will also get an additional $50 if you deposit $400, guys. It's free BTC. Next is Voyager, guys. I also got a referral link in the description below. Instead of just only getting $25, you'll get $25 and some free VGX tokens, guys. Next is BlockFi. BlockFi is part of the quadruple threat. Go ahead and make a deposit. Use this referral link in the description below. You get $100. Depending on how much you deposit, you can get all the way up to, guess how much? 250 bucks. All right, so what the pants is Celsius and BlockFi for? Well, you can use both of those as like your bank. They get some pretty nice juicy yields. And Voyager is more so like trading, and it gets some juicy yields as well. And the last one to try is Crypto.com, guys. You can trade some like smaller altcoins, and you guys will get $25 in CRO once you guys get the Visa card. Why do I like the Visa card? Well, you can sell crypto and buy some junk with it so i can buy a sandwich with my crypto i don't use btc but i'll use like stable coins and junk so anyways if you guys want to support the channel that's the quadruple threat thanks for tuning in guys you'll get paid to do it